Welcome to the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Praise the sun. Yay! Praise the sun. <laughs> oh, but anyway, um, so as you guys can hear, it's just me and Silver. Uh, Seppi. Again. Yep. Seppi had to do Mother's Day stuff. Torterra. I'm assuming the same. If he pops in later on, yay. But if not, Pokemon needs to fertilize stuff, I guess. But anyhow, how are you doing, Zilba? I'm well, fine. I'm celebrating Mother's Day too, thank you very much. Ah, yes. How's, how, what was it? What's your plan for today? Go over to my family's this evening. I have a gift for my mama. Ah. And, uh, we'll just have a celebratory dinner. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, talking about Mother's Day, right? You know, we're reviewing this issue, uh, we're reviewing this comic, we're reviewing My Little Pony Friendship is Magic issue 65, and in this issue, uh, Princess Celestia disguised herself to live among ordinary ponies for a day. Oh, isn't that nice? Like, a mama wants to mingle with her children. Well, she is Equestria's mother, and in a very real sense, always trying to get them to grow. Yes, true that, true that. And see, I did a segue! <laughs> A very good segue. Well done. <laughs> Highlighting it does not make it good. <laughs> I find that rather faulty reasoning. I mean, come on. What was it? The Emperor's New Groove. How did we get here first? I don't know. It makes no sense. <laughs> and yet, it's funny. You, know, you can laugh. It's okay to laugh. Uh, true that, true that. But still, uh, before we head on to the reviews, uh, first impressions are in order. Silva, what do you think, my friend? Well, I like the idea behind this. I, I like seeing Celestia be go incognito and just try to get an unbiased or uh, honest opinion from her uh, subjects. But it starts to fall apart towards the middle, and then, eh, but then it picks up again with a depiction for an ending. I don't want to get, talk about that too much just yet, but it's a fun idea. But perhaps the forced aspects of the story. Bring it down. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. And as for me, this comic was a lot of fun going through. Uh, it, but it reminded me of this one fanfic that I read a long time ago called Sunny Skies All Day Long. I won't talk about it as of yet, but it reminded me of that. But um, as for the comic itself, I like it. It's a lot of fun. The, the shenanigans that happen in between is a lot of fun. I mean, I could just go on uh, trying to describe the comic without going spoiler, but that would make me sound repetitive. So, nah. So, anyway, uh, if you have not read this comic yet, I say pause here and go read it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy the comic. And, yes, let's head into spoilers. So, we start off the comic with our hero, Celestia, um, planning to do something. And that is put on an amulet that can, well, change her into whatever she wants. Luna has qualms with this and says that, hey, um, ain't doing that dangerous? And Celestia says, ah, pff, I've been doing this for thousands of years. It's all okay. You, you should trust me. So to trust me as I wield ancient evil magic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's like Frodo saying, oh, I'm just going to put the ring on for a little bit. <laughs> what, could, what could happen for a little bit? Yeah. So I'm just going to jump forward a little bit and say that I like the box that the amulet is being kept in. It it depicts a changeling. Foreshadowing. Although I imagine Chrysalis is be like, that's identity theft. Stop stealing, stop stealing our culture. <laughs> you have to wonder, right? Like, um, Celestia has been living for thousands of years now. So... Is this one of those peace treaties back in the days and stuff? Who knows? I, I'm not even sure if the uh, assertion that Chrysalis is a thousand years old is still a part of these comics. Oh, yeah, true. that. But it's... Oh, yeah, because um, we saw uh, she was made from Ikigui stuff from... Who's his name? Uh, Starshul? Well, it all started with a decayed, rotten acorn. And lo and behold, what's that on her... Uh, pendant. Ah, an acorn. Yes. Yep. So she's definitely rocking old school magic. Yep, true that, true that. But at the same time, too, since this is comic canon, eh, things are a bit icky and mushy. <clears throat> but 
Talking about Iki and Mashi, before Celestia could go out on her grand adventure, Luna pulls her back in and treats her like a little filly, uh, combing her hair and whatnot. <laughs> I say that's adorably cute. Mm, there you go. So we get to see Celestia traveling to Philadelphia, Manhattan, uh, Florido? That's how you say it? Florido? Well, there's no R, so it's Folido. Folido, okay. And also Seattle. <laughs> I do appreciate that in Philadelphia they have a boxing pony on the steps. Uh, oh my goodness! That, that I, I remember a comedian making a joke about that because you have a statue of a fictional boxer who is your hero. Hmm. <laughs> uh, boys, but anywho, yeah. So we get insight into the citizens of Equestria stating their um, interest for Celestia and whatnot. Uh, one asking, um, do you really think we seem to get invaded uh, uh, invade and attack a lot? And they say ah, none of those attacks were ever successful and stuff. And uh, people just saying, um, I, I think Celestia is a bit aloof and whatnot and, and so on. And while all of this is happening, Celestia kind of eavesdrops on them and get to hear in what they have to say. Creepy much? Well, it does raise a lot of questions of ethics. I mean, you, you are eavesdropping, spying on your own people. Imagine for a moment if uh, America tapped its own phones. Oh, wait, we did that. <laughs> Not fun. So it... Basically, I'm of two minds on this. Celestia is doing the one, trying to get a view on her subjects and where she stands in relation to them. And I get that to do that, she can't necessarily get their full honest opinion if they're talking directly to her. There's this thousand year mythos behind her. There's this shock and awe. And we've already seen that a lot of ponies will say one thing one minute and the opposite the next. And they do it just to curry favor with her. So this may be the a more honest way, or what, I should say, a way to hear a more honest opinion. But it's not an honest way of seeking that information, because you're not you're hiding from them, eavesdropping, which is an invasion of privacy. And how do you know that's the truth either? They could just be blowing off steam after having a rough day. Or the aloofness that they allude to may be influenced by family members who are also aloof. True, true. And this is where this kind of story gets a bit mucky. Concept and idea, I do appreciate it and I do see value in it. But once you dig deeper into it, it kind of falls apart. You agree? It does. It's, it's a good idea on Celestia's part, but it's not going to work in the long run. Uh, well, she'll tell you that it worked. <laughs> you know what? No, she, Luna mentioned that. Lu, Luna mentioned that in the very beginning. Uh, what? The dangers? Um, uh, sorry, okay. Uh, so you're going to do this tradition of yours again? <laughs> again? Uh, yeah, yeah, so anywho. Uh, while in Seattle, uh, she overhears ponies talking about how she loves Ponyville and Ponyville is her favorite and whatnot. And to Celestia's credit, she does go to Ponyville a lot because of the ponies there and how they are. And it's Equestria's best ponies there. Yay. Favoritism. Haha. <laughs> uh, boys. Well, you got to ask, how do you know that they're the best ponies in Equestria if you never give the other towns a chance? Yeah, true. I mean, so here's the part where I would like to play devil's advocate and say, oh, so let's just be around for a thousand years. And technically, she helped build Ponyville. So she has a soft spot for her there and stuff. Mm, but because you live for a thousand years, that means there's all manner of uh, foals and uh, colts and fillies born that you've never met. Mm, true that, and she also admitted to that too later on. Yes, <laughs> so and it's not that I don't understand her her inclination and fondness, but there's also the argument to be made that 
she needs to give the rest of the world a greater chance. True that, true that. But still, uh, as for now, we'll hold our thoughts on that later. And let's move on, because Celestia is in Ponyville. Does she have a nickname for her alter ego self? No? No, I don't think she ever came up with one. She hasn't... The funny thing is she has not directly engaged anybody. Never just uh, started a conversation saying, Hey, what do you think about Celestia? Yeah, that would be strange. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> the 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 assumption is that she's um, standing around close to people who are talking about Celestia. You would say that people are magically inclined to do so. Oh, that would make this even more morally questionable. Well, we haven't yet talked about her design. Oh, yeah. So um, let's put a pin on her arriving at Ponyville and look at her overall design because I like it. It's simple. It screams... I don't know. I just like it. Her cutie mark is a sun with a mask on to symbolize that, hey, it's me, Celestia, putting on a mask. Ingenious. Well, it it is funny. I mean, it's like this design is daring people to uh, to take note. Her coat is more inclined towards yellow, whereas her regular coat is white with a slight hint of pink. Mm-hmm. She's tied her mane in braids so it can't flow but an earring that matches the, her crown jewel and uh, two strands of her mane that are carryovers from her regular design and a bright blonde uh, mane and tail to symbolize the sun. It's like she's daring ponies to recognize it's her but not. <laughs> it's like back, it's like in that first uh, miraculous episode where uh, Minette is Minuet is standing right next to Ladybug, uh, and no one recognizes her. It's like, you people are morons. <laughs> You're all oh, morons. my God. Then you will like another episode that we'll be talking about in the future. But that's in the future. My goodness. i just like, come on. <laughs> <coughs> but anywho, yes. The design overall, I like it. I, I do like it. And I like the fact that she opted to go for a Pegasus instead of a unicorn. It, sir, I think that's practicality for ease of travel. She can still fly over all of Equestria on her own, which one would think the train industry would hate Pegasi for that very reason. But she might be a special case. Yeah, but at the same time, too, we do see Pegasi riding trains. Because do you really... Okay, <laughs> the... <laughs> how do I put this? Um, I, I think I remember the Flash from Justice League mentioned this. Um... Wonder Woman to ask, "Why would you need a car? You can run already. F- you you can run really fast. Like running's tiring. I I need a car. <laughs> Something like that. I, I don't really remember the full um, phrase. But uh, we also shouldn't neglect the s- disguised Celestia from issue fifty. Fish was very short. Uh, there was a short in which Discord, as a gift, uh, yes. gave Celestia." Gave Celestia Day as a gray Pegasi with a purple mane, and I forget her cutie mark. It was not, it was not nearly so. Hey, look at me. Uh, all right, all right. I remember that one. I remember that one now. But at the same time, too, that one was. Uh, hmm. Okay. I, I I now now I remember why it was not hundred percent memorable, and I really hate to point this out, but it was done by Jay Foskett. Let's see here. But what, what was the? It looks like a candle, a light bulb. Really? I can't tell if it's a candle or a light bulb or a light bulb that's shaped like a candle. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wait, are you sure it's fifty? Yes, it's at the tail end oh. after the main story is concluded. All right, then. I don't have any pictures for it now. Anyway, well, to put it simply, Discord definitely went for, tried to make her as mundane as possible. Uh, this one, Celestia is being just a little show off, just a little, and that's about to bite her. Ah, how so, Silver? Because while she's about to get scammed by Spike for his merch, <laughs> uh, as seen in uh, Zen and the Arctic Gazebo Repair, <laughs> which again, I gotta say, Spike in the comics is just a bit more of a sociopath. Ah, Spike is okay. He he's selling toys people want. Again, the kind of sociopath. Yeah, you want this. You need this. Buy our stuff. Oh, 
We're talking about My Little Pony, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> You want these, you need this, buy this stuff. Yeah, it's a product of Hasbro, and Hasbro has tie-ins to other stuff. Hasbro owns your cho- your childhood. Yes, don't 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 lie, you like the Transformers. Of course I do. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it was a good thing. Ha- we own you, generations. <laughs> so, but anyway, what happened to Celestia, man? Like, did she manage to buy them toys? Nope, because the very minute she is a, a pickpocket, a thief, I guess you have to have pockets for them to be picked. Mm. Uh, a thief steals her amulet. Oh no! And I gotta be, I gotta be honest. When you're this bright pony with this flourish of mane, you're kind of drawing attention to yourself visually and making yourself an easy mark. Although I suppose uh, I, I wonder how true it is when Lord Varys of Game of Thrones said. You can tell royalty or rich people by the way they walk. Uh, is this with the Starbucks cup or without the Starbucks cup? Uh, this was, I believe, two seasons before the Starbucks <laughs> cup. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you believe they missed that? Oh, goodness. I can. I mean, yeah. they just done a, a month-long shoot for a battle scene. I'm confident that they were all pretty worn out yeah i understand i understand even what um lord of the rings had bloopers like that where was it gandalf that had a rolex on <laughs> hey he's a wizard he's entitled to it <laughs> uh, we're carrying on carrying on so celestia's amulet got stolen oh no and well what'd you do when things get stolen call the police no silver that's wrong you chase down the thief and it seems that Celestia here is pretty fast on her feet, but somehow managed to stumble upon some barrels that the perpetrator threw at her. And she blames her small, shorter legs. Ooh. Oh, sure, that's the reason. Turns out the princess has been skipping on leg day. Mm, but I have to point something out. Why is she running and not flying? <laughs> I imagine if you're emotionally upset, or, you know, in high adrenaline, perhaps you're uh, not used to using the wings in that way. It's kind of like when people ask, well, why didn't Twilight teleport at this, that, or the other scene? It takes a moment's concentration. And if cadence is any indication, the royals sometimes are so busy doing their duties, they neglect their bodies. Probably, probably. But anywho, um, just want to point that out because people might point it out and tell us in the comment, why didn't we point it out? But anywho, as we move on, uh, the thief or the perpetrator got away and Celestia has a plan or she has some friends that she can ask help with. And she looks at Twilight's not-so-good-looking castle. Mm. It still does not match the the town or the landscape well. Mm. Especially when it's just this big purple blob. Welcome to the Fortress of Grimace. (laughs) No, add the school to that list. I'd rather not, thank you. (laughs) But anywho, we get to see the perpetrator go to a condemned farm building, farmhouse. Uh, Yeah, condemned farm, which I bet the Apple family's like, we own this here, Potts. Well, it could be the pears. Mm, But that's right across, that's directly across from the uh, Sweet Apple Acres. This looks to be further away. Yeah, but you know, it could be a bigger estate, who knows? I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm I'm picturing Granny Smith as a mafia boss right now, and I'm not giving that up. <laughs> all righty then, all righty then. So anywho, um, we, we get to see that the perpetrator's name is Scarlet Petals, and she's working for her auntie Shadowfall. Naming conventions of ponies, my goodness. Well, they're very honest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So anywho... Um, Scarlet here, she comes in and explains that why she's late. Because, well, um, I was being delibr- delib- deliberate. Yes. Uh, you say to only get the high-end trinkets. So she did. And, well, she explains that she got this amulet. And it feels like it's something strange. Her aunt Scarlet. Shadowfall says like eh, don't like don't it don't look like nothing much so it's like tr- trash, but suddenly Scarlet here 
transforms into a, another pony. And from that point on, Shadow Hero wants the amulet. Hmm. And she already has a plan for it. Like, ooh, could you just imagine us blending in with the crowd, all those wanted posters not doing anything because we can change ourselves? Yeah. And she gets to be an adult. It's like, oh, it's like big. Where's Tom Hanks' pony? Oh, we, we forgot to mention that um, at the same time, too, there's also um, Scarlet's brother. Ah, what was his name again? Winter or something. I'm scanning through because he doesn't say it right away. Winter Comet. Yeah, that's near the end, too. <laughs> He's not the brightest bulb. Well, kind of. Here's a problem. Winter is not quite as bad as uh, Doran. Who's that? From... Uh, she was the Nyx in uh, uh, Nightmare Moon's Fiendship is Magic. Oh, yeah, that one where... <sighs> okay. Where all right, Dor- Doran was so oblivious because Nightmare Moon would mentally attack ponies right in front of her and she wouldn't see a thing. Winter Comet is not able to read the room very well, so he's rather hopelessly naive. But he's a young man. I don't know, bordering on... on uh, oblivious. Now, I'm not, I, I can't accept that young is the excuse because kids do look and they do see when someone's being cruel or someone's being uh, mean to the those they love. All right, they're, they're more aware than people often give them credit. Mm-hmm. True, 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 true. Uh, but anywho, for this scenario here, um, Scarlet uh, comforts Winter here and Winter just says, oh, that's a cool trick. And yeah, Shadow just wants it. Like, give it to me now. And here's the thing. Scarlet is panicking because how do I change back? And how, like, how, right? I mean, this is spooky and scary. But Shadow just demands the amulet. Like, she's not giving a care about Scarlet's safety. And this kind of sparks... An anger for Scarlet, where she blows her top and runs away. Honestly, that's probably the healthiest thing she could do. Though maybe because the amulet, she's just like, okay, Winter, bye, good luck with your, this incredibly abusive mare who wielded that cane like she's going to hit me with it. <laughs> it's like, grab the squirt and run. Yeah, but still, she she is a youngin. <laughs> Boy. So, yeah, uh, she runs and Winter just says, uh, she's, will she come back? And Shadow just says, she better for both of your sakes. Like, hmm, huh, there's something not right here. But anywho, uh, we put a pin on that as we go on to the next scene. A very lovely scene. Oh, yeah. Celestia learns the, the dangers of having a free press. <laughs> okay. I imagine that every ruler who's allowed that has regretted it at some point. What does free press mean for the general audience? Free press, basically, that they can uh, report as they please. They do not have the government... Well, okay, let's do this proper. Let's find out a definition. Free press definition. A bot... Uh, a body of work of publishers, news media, etc., not controlled or restricted by government censorship in political or ideological matters. Oh, that that we don't have. <laughs> well, no, we've got we theoretically we do, but in practice, at least here in America, it depends on who runs the company. Yeah, I mean, still, you guys so, have quote unquote free press. The news is a business, true, which which is probably even worse than censorship. <laughs> yep. But anywho, that's besides the point. So on the next scene, we get to see Celestia knocking on the castle doors, asking for help from Twilight Sparkle. Twilight opens the door excitingly and she's deadpan because you're not Celestia. And she says, Celestia's much taller than you. And they banter a bit. Like um, Celestia tells Twilight about her favorite stuff, all the adventures and stuff. And Twilight just says, a lot of people watch the episode. A lot of people read the comic books and whatnot. <laughs> and <laughs> the, These are fans. They know, they remember things even I don't remember. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, and she says, sometimes I hate 
uh, having a free press. <laughs> oh, boys. Well, I do find it funny that Twilight and Starlight, and I realize this is the last time we've seen Starlight in the comics. Oh, yeah, true that, true that. They start looking up psychological disorders. I'm just like, oh, great. Are we going to have Starlight bra- uh, brainwash Princess Celestia to think that she's not Princess Celestia? Oh, uh, well, That'd be great. L- little hypnosis. Maybe make her afraid of ladybugs. Oh, God, no. Uh, let's still... <laughs> we may need to talk about that one soonish. <laughs> oh, but anywho, uh, Celestia just says, finally, you're getting it. You're going to help me. And Twilight and Starlight don't believe her. But here's the thing. Celestia here knows something that Twilight knows nobody else knows. And she says that I know what happened the first time you try, try the first time you cast the spell of uh, Pheromontia. And that sparks an interest in Twilight saying nobody knows what happened. And <laughs> Uh, Celestia says, I told you I never tell anyone, and I haven't. And she whispers in Twilight's ears, and with with a snap, Twilight believes that, hey, that's Celestia. (laughs) That's probably the one time blackmail has that. Well, it wouldn't technically be blackmail. No, no, no. I mean, it's telling the truth. But you can tell from the expression that Twilight never wants this to get out. Ever. True. And Which I, makes me all the more curious. Yeah, and I do love Celestia's face in this. The way she's milking it is just awesome. Also, by the way, um, do you know what the spell is? Spell of Promethea. Yeah, because... I mean, it's kind of like Prometheus. Not really, because when I Google search it beforehand, Promethea is kind of a bug or something like that? Transformation? Well... For me, it's a comic book series. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's what comes... Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I don't have anything more to yeah, add. Yeah. It's just Promethea. It uh, looks to be some sort of goddess-type character. Oh, but it's in a futuristic world, it looks like. Mm, I don't know. Maybe this is... Who wrote this comic, by the way? Uh, Tom Zaylor's thing. Maybe he just wrote something about it. Maybe... maybe. Oh, and... Right? And Alan Moore made Promethea, it looks like. Ah, okay. Um, Maybe, nah, there's no info drop on what it is. So, yeah, none. Right, wait, maybe maybe the spell of Promethea, he probably got crossed with the spell of Alan Moore and summoned a great snake god. Oh, God, no. But anywho, <laughs> let's carry on. So, Celestia explains what happened to her, to Twilight. Um, this is, quote-unquote... A what you might call this um, expose? Not really expose. A exposition. Yes, exposition. Thank you. Um, exposition for the characters. Yet we know, but the character don't know. So it's just a recap. So anywho, uh, explains what happened, and Twilight just says, "Oh, changing magic? Sure, no problem. Um, that'd be dangerous, but easy to track. So don't worry, Princess um, Starlight, and I will try to track it down." So, yay. And you can see that Celestia looks guilty for not being able to help. Mostly because, unfortunately, that's the role she's been forced into a lot. <laughs> and I guess I guess now's the, the time to talk about... This was an interesting premise. Celestia just witnessing Equestria for a day. In some ways, I feel like if they had just stuck with that, it would have been a fascinating comic. Mm-hmm. But because of this little thief... Now Celestia is once again needing to call on Twilight and her friends for help. She has a reason why she's not so, uh, she doesn't have the autonomy. But it feels like, in some ways, it validates the criticism of uh, some of the pointers she was listening to. That she keeps relying on Twilight and the others, and there's these near disasters brought on by, uh, admittedly, her lack of foresight or oversight. True, true, and some. Well, I, I think in a previous town, someone said that Twilight should take over, and Celestia mentions ah, not yet, not yet. Wait until season nine. <laughs> that was actually in Ponyville. They said oh. that. <laughs> so maybe maybe Ponyville's a little uh, a little biased. Yeah, I, I call bias on that one. So anywho, we move on to the next scene, and we follow. Scarlet's adventure 
through town and people talking about what they lost. Uh, one pony lost um, pearls that was given by her mother when she moved to Ponyville and stuff. And hearing this made uh, Scarlet feel bad and guilty about it and decides that maybe I could just keep this amulet and uh, what you call this just change into another form and stay this way. I mean, start a new life, start fresh and whatnot. And before she could do anything about it, she see Winter behind him and a uh, shadow there too. And yeah, things are about to get violent here. Silva? Yep. Well, there's nothing more to say other than Winter really is not the brightest bulb. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, but he's naive. Naivete for a child is wondrous at points and can be very very annoying <laughs> maddening for adults true, true. but still we, we get to see shadow here demanding the amulet and scarlet says no and understands what she has been doing is really really wrong and it seems that she is scary looking goodness me well, that this is drawn by Andy Price, I believe. Yep, indeed, indeed. And he, Price, loves to scare people. <laughs> yep. I mean, we'll we'll get to the Cosmos arc eventually. Oh yeah, that that'll be soonish. Like what, another five more episodes? And uh, and then of course, anytime he draws a changeling, even the reformed ones like Ocellus, uh, he can draw them quite terrifying. Wait, did he draw Ocellus? Which issue? Uh, this was a Halloween issue. I'm trying to remember if it was after. I think it was after this. Hmm, okay. Maybe? Probably. I, I need to check. But still, uh, let's carry on. And before Scarlet can hulk out and beat someone. <laughs> Scarlet smash! Yeah, yeah. Uh, Celestia comes in and asks for the necklace back because, hey, that thing's mine. And that. That. Amulet is a very powerful relic, and you're not strong enough to wear it without it taking its toll on you. And, yeah, uh, Shadow here just says, Who helped you when you and your brother were not around? I was the one who helped you, raised you up in this world. I protect you and stuff. I taught you the tools of the trade um, and stuff. I just like to think, that amulet is like 4chan. The more you're around it, the more terrible a person you become. It's not that bad. Oh, you're right. I, should, I shouldn't disrespect the amulet like that. <laughs> oh, boise. But anywho, yeah. And Shadow just keeps saying stuff like, "You, when you were too alone and cold and hungry, I took you in. All I ask is that you earn your keep. And now finally that you have a chance to repay me, you're holding out on that amulet, uh, amulet and stuff. And... Uh, this kind of takes Celestia off and just says, uh, I'm just going to summarize here. A true teacher doesn't really wait for the possible reward that she might get. A true teacher passes on her knowledge to the next generation to give them a head start benefits for their own future and uh, growth. Nothing, no repays or whatever that crap is. We we just do this because we want them to grow. And she is fortunate enough to have one of those students, which is Twilight. And Twilight says, uh, so do I. And which is Starlight. Yay, much awesomeness. And we don't see Starlight again after this. <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, boy. Wait. That's, <laughs> that's how much... <laughs> We love seeing her as Twilight student um, or former student. I mean, ow. You know what? My hit canon is that she's going to get ice cream in the human world. <laughs> she's addictive. Yep. So, anywho, um, Celestia just says, You are no teacher. You are an abuser. And you take advantage of this wayward pony. And, yeah, um, Shadow is fed up of this and says, Give me a amulet or Winter's going to get a beating. And <laughs> uh, Scarlet here is in between herself and says, you know what? This amulet doesn't belong to you, so I'm just going to give 
it back to the pony who is with the princess of friendship and stuff. So yeah, uh, the next line here is just awesome because Shadow just says, "You little fool, you are in such trouble, and no pony is going to help you. Not your brother, not these ponies, not even Princess Celestia herself." Even without the line Princess Celestia, do you not know who is there? I mean, Princess Twilight Sparkle and her student. Those two are enough. I've seen people mouth off to Superman in comics. <laughs> it's People can be dumb. I know. Very dumb. But the line, the, the scene after this is just awesome. It's pure awesomeness. Because... Celestia transforms back to her original form and says the line, I help every pony. And uh, the ponies that were in trouble were in deep trouble now because... <laughs> we. Yeah, and that's about the time Shadowfell knew she done messed up. Yep. <coughs> uh, you, you know, I just remember that line from, a, from, from that... I don't know, it wasn't... Uh, from a seri- TV series, but turning into a meme, and it's like, uh, Sweetie Bot's gonna do some extra work today, and it says, like, surprise! That's not a word! Well, I'm just thinking of Twilight in uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ponies. Oh, look, she's using magic to peacefully restrain a criminal. Well, there goes that code of conduct. <laughs> no, that one was just bad, man. Like, oh, God. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little vindictive. <laughs> But I just, I find the contrast funny. Yeah, true. But any, uh, at the same time, too, this pony here is a citizen of Equestria, and Celestia does have the power. But those buffaloes were they? Oh God! Oh, they weren't buffaloes; they were bulls. It's all, it's all a load of bull. Oh, man. Like I hate trying to justify their actions, but no, uh, let's move on. But, <laughs> but here we go. The villain is defeated rather quickly. I wouldn't mind if they like used her in a giant game of pinball. <laughs> oh no! Or maybe make her, a, or maybe she's cast into the dungeon of Pac Man. Oh man! To await execution as his power pellet. Oh man! No, Silver. You know what happens to villains, right? They got sent to Tartarus. <laughs> oh no! Now they're dispelled into the ether. But anywho. Celestia traps Shadow in a bubble, and Princess Celestia apologizes for not being there for Winter and Scarlet. And Scarlet is surprised. Wait, you're apologizing? Uh, Auntie always says the powerful never apologizes. And that there is wrong, my friend. That there is wrong. Because Celestia says that your auntie's full of crap. It is the duty... Is the sorry, it's the duty, it's the powerful's duty to defend the weak. And that did not happen here. And she feels bad for not being there for them. <laughs> and now she will help them find a home for them and stuff. Well, they get to stay in the palace. Meanwhile, there's, there's probably a little, uh, all of her pony. Please, princess, I want some more. <laughs> Don't don't I get to live in the castle? <laughs> uh, boys. But no, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I I just love uh, Scarlet's line about. Um, I mean, is it really a place for us? We've done so many mistakes, princess, and <laughs> uh, you will enjoy talking to my sister. And so let's just this like, oh, bring this up again. Why won't you? <laughs> So is, uh, most of them just thinking, wow, that's the pot calling the kettle screw up. <laughs> We're in this situation because you made some mistakes, Princess Celestia. Mm-hmm. Don't you be, don't you be dissing Luna when she advised you against this? True that, true that. Hey, uh, but Tiberius has a friend, so that's cool. Yes, Tiberius is thrilled. <laughs> Yay. But anywho, um, Twilight says some um, heart to heart talk with Celestia. And Celestia now knows what to do. Like, disguising is all fun and good and whatnot, but in all honesty, it's not honest. And if she wants to know what the people are thinking of her and stuff, she needs to be direct. And disguises are not going to work anymore. 
And with the help of Star- Twilight and Starlight, Princess Celestia does a mega blast on the amulet and destroys it. Causing a magical shockwave that spread throughout Equestria and mutated all of its citizens. <laughs> now she has created a hellscape which none can, can abide. <laughs> you- oh, sorry. I was, uh, I was channeling Warhammer there for a minute. Wish. But I do like the uh, changing flames coming out of the artifact. That looks really cool. And with that, um, Twilight, sorry, Princess Celestia says the amulet was too powerful and it was, it, it must be destroyed. And hiding, yeah, that's why I just repeated and stuff. And yeah, and Princess Celestia just says, like, Twilight, you're an awesome teacher and student. I'm glad to have you. And coming ends. <coughs> uh, she calls her, they, she calls them her teachers and friends. Yay. Hey. And yeah, with that, coming ends. And then this, I, I like this comic. I like this comic. But like I mentioned earlier on, this reminds me of a fan fiction. And I think I've mentioned it a few times, but said fan fiction is titled Sunny Skies All Day Long, written by Phantom Fox. And you can look for it on filmfiction.net. And um, the synopsis here on uh, film fiction says, Princess Celestia tries... Sorry. Oh, Princess Celestia tires, oh. constantly being surrounded by decorum, deference, and formality. Go ahead, man, since you've got the uh, rings on this. Okay, I'll, I'll just read the whole thing. Princess Celestia tires of constantly being surrounded by decorum, deference, and formality, and decides to take a day off from being princess. But visiting Ponyville incognito is harder than she expects. Will she be able to fit in and make friends without blowing her cover? And I have to say, this comic was written on April 14... Sorry, published on April 14, 2012. And I hate to say this. I really, really hate to say this. But this this fanfiction is much better. <laughs> I think because this fiction keeps it focused on Celestia and her character's interaction, rather than introducing a... a <clears throat> Basically, characters designed to be the antagonists for a short-term series. It get, instead of getting to see Celestia in a new element, it becomes Celestia and Twilight and Starlight versus this other element. It just doesn't work. Kind of, yeah. Not well, not as it, not as well as it does when you just let Celestia have her story. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, this comic here could be a really nice slice of life. Um. <laughs> Okay, I I've, I have, just have to say, I don't hate this comic. I love this comic. But if you have to ask me, compared to Sunny Skies All Day Long, Sunny Skies All Day Long is much better because of the storytelling mechanic. And here's the thing. In Sunny Skies All Day Long, Celestia goes to Ponyville and interacts with the main six. And she tries to hide it from them. And it works. Except for Pinky, because Pinky's Pinky. And the interaction they have in between, um, like, there's no black, black arts, like, spying on you kind of deal. Like, Celestia just bumps into Rainbow Dash. Celestia helps Applejack push a, a cart and falls into a mud. And Rarity comes along and says, Oh, darling, let's go to the spa. My treat. For me, it feels like things flows naturally. And I enjoy reading the fanfic. Like, it's 8,000 plus words long. And I recommend it all the time. If people ask me, yo, Norman, what fanfic do you recommend me read on film fiction? I say this. This is a good start. It's a one shot and it's a slice of life. And if you like Celestia, this is awesome. It's been a while since I've read it, so I actually need to re-familiarize myself. But I remember it was a fun light-hearted in story and a good insight for Celestia. The author here really knows, I won't say really, but this was done on season one before season two came out because um, the depiction of Luna here is Baby Luna. Wait, I'm sorry. Ba- I'm lost okay, now. Baby when Luna? When I say Baby Luna, I mean um, before she was uh, gamer fuel Luna. Ah, when she was just after her restoration. Yes. But still, um, fanfic is awesome. Fanfic is awesome, and I, I recommend it. So, 
with that said, let's head on to final thoughts. What do you think about the comic, Silver? Well, as always, I love Andy Price's artwork. Uh, he does a fantastic job. It's funny, there is even a Reflections reference uh, on one of the stalls in the background. And I think he's very proud of Reflections so, uh, because he references it all the time whenever he can. Uh, yes. But, but it's, it's a fine story. I like the first part where Celestia is exploring Equestria. I think it doesn't help much when you bring in an antagonist where one is really not called for. This is a chance for Celestia to have some introspection. And in some ways, it feels like what could have been an interesting study of her character got derailed. <laughs> Uh, but it does give Twilight and Starlight a chance to shine. And there, you're right that the scene where Celestia reveals herself in her full power is, uh, pretty badass. It's like, I don't, I don't envy Shadowfall, <laughs> who's prob, who's probably, I don't know, thrown in a giant ball pit. What if all the evil ponies are sealed in magical spheres and thrown in a, in a pit? And, you know, uh, a giant creature is just like to play in the pit. Oh, no. That's how Cerberus gets his exercise. You play catch with the the souls of the damned. Oh, God, no. <laughs> yes, I'm going with this headcanon now. <laughs> All right. Then. Oh, please. <laughs> so a fun comic, but not what I would hold up as a chance to really study Celestia in a new environment. True. That. I, I totally agree there. And as for me and my thoughts... I like this comic. Like, Andy Price's art is awesome. Whenever he does his work, I always give it a 10 out of 10 in terms of artwork. But in terms of story here, it falls apart. Because um, when I was reading it, I was so excited to see that, hey, it's going to be another Slice of Life comic where Celestia gets to have a day off and just be herself and maybe buy stuff and interact with the ponies and, oh, the first um, creature that she's going to interact is with Spike. Let's see where this goes. And maybe uh, hijinks ensue. Nope. We we get Scarlet stealing stuff. And oh god, yeah. It falls apart. It falls apart. We could have gotten something awesome, but no, nah, we didn't. But that's besides the point. What we got is a pretty good story because it shows us that not everything in Equestria is neat and clean. We still have abusive characters. We still have uh, ponies who are kind of left alone or kind of orphans. So yeah, that that we 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 get to see that. Not hundred percent sure how canon that is, but still we get to see that, and we get to well just see some awesome art by any price. That's all I can say. Um, other than that, um, nothing much. <laughs> nothing much. I think I've geeked out most of what I have to say during the review. So yeah, th that's my thought. And yeah, mo more Luna. We we need more Luna. <clears throat> yes, more Luna. <laughs> so with that, um, comic ends and review ends. So Silver, what are we going to do for next week's review? Well, I think we'll step outside the Pony Universe and assemble. Ah. Oh, or maybe I should say, assemble. <laughs> yes. So next week's review, we are going, well, it's a bit late, but hey, uh, better late than never. And also it will give you some time to, well, watch the movie. Because next week we are going to do a review slash talk on Avengers Endgame. Yes, so you have a lot of time to technically technically go watch it because uh, when this comes out, sorry, when that review comes out, it'll be what, four weeks, a month away after the movie came out, right? Yep. So yeah, we are we are in the safe territory of spoilers. So yeah. Or at least if, if you haven't seen it yet, sorry, you're on your own. So anywho, that will be next week's thing. <clears throat> so anyway... If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And my personal Twitter, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. 
Silver, what about you? You can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill. Also on DeviantArt, MLP Silver Quill, where you can find uh, my Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics and title cards all of my videos. Uh, if you want to see my videos, just go over to the YouTubes and type in Silver Quill or After the Fact. I should be one of the first things you see. All right. And you can find me almost every Wednesday on Equestria Daily, posting new comic reviews. But didn't you finish your uh, series? Like, what's there to have? Is there more? At the time of this podcast, I've only got one annual left. Ah. And I might re- revisit Siege of the Crystal Empire. Ooh, revisiting. That's going to be interesting. Well, a lot's happened since then. True that, true that. So, yeah, do check him out, guys, because Silver is awesome, and we all know you came here for Silver. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I'd like to think fans come to talk about Le Comics. True that, true that. And also maybe episode reviews. We do episode reviews. Like Season 9, that's something we haven't talked about yet. yet. So, yeah, soonish. But soon, mm-hmm. soon. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icons to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on from live.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And also, a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Light. Thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And we will guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS show. See ya. Adios. So, that's a Lestia transforming scene. That's just badass. Could use the Sailor Moon theme. Do, 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 Princess Celestia. <laughs> we'll workshop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, people are out there. The artists are out there. So work on it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>